And here we go. This is Flash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the 4th of April, 2020. And everything on my side says that I'm broadcasting live from a non-disclosed location in a... Whoops, except for that. Okay. Now I got it. All right. Did it stop? I forgot to hit stop, I think. Anyway, this is uh, Flash at the Dork Table on the 4th of April, 2020, 2020, for all you number people. Can you hear me out there, Mental? Type a big yes. The lag is short here. It's only like six seconds now. So you get to hear my wonderful voice a little faster than usual. Hey, thank you, sir. And uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to do a solo dork table. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do more than one hour, though. Hmm. Had uh, all these little changes going along with uh, new servers and whatnot have kind of messed me up. Take something and move it four inches to one side, and I, I can't find it anymore. <laughs> so, thank you, Grimner, for the uh, assistance earlier, sorting out all that technical doomage stuff. And we got for the uh, bots and bodies for your typing approval today. We've got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, and Ty, Asmo, Chels, Doni, Circolo, hello, honey, Duh, me, Frumpy Work, Gram Z, Gram Z's doing a little better already, but still too um, rough in the insides to do radio. So um, she's going to take a little break. And then we got Woody, Meisterbrow, Prince, Rob Works, the bubbler, Rome's trust number one, Banner White, B, Weatherdork. Phantom Chaskara Cyborg Noodle D Dork Cakes Hey Mental E Man N Siv Gromit J's Nines J's Kiss Pone Sauce Smart Ass The Holiest Roger and Z Pix And there's the uh the lineup for your shots and shimmies in the RLM chat where people go to <sighs> you know, enjoy their exceptionalism because you're bound to be better than somebody else if you try hard enough. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small world, <laughs> I think. Anyway, uh, what we got going on is... Hmm, my opinion's pretty uh, isolated. I don't seem to get a lot of support. But it's okay. I would be kind of shocked in my reality if the majority was actually seeing what I see because it's always been like this. Always go, well, I think you guys are being, you know, screwed here. And they go, no, 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 no. Uh, Terrorists hijacked planes and blew up the Twin Towers and shit. Okay, yeah, that's what happened. So, you know, you, you get to a point with people that, Barriers can't be crossed. You know, we've got all our, our opinions. We're all right, and we're all going to be right. And in the long run, everything is going to be all right as long as. And here's the thing I, I see with society. Society's a miserable failure. But as long as society has got you living for tomorrow, not where you're at in the moment, that seems to be a big part of the uh, the puzzle for me, you know, what makes this thing so clear, why, why I seem to get through it so easily with so little concern, is it's obviously not possible for life to be in the condition it's in without a lot of people fucking up a lot of things all at one time. Unfortunately, I seem to have a singular opinion, and, and there's not a lot of folk that can hold that opinion without, uh, I guess, in the long run. Somewhere along the road, they're going to make up something that justifies shit, you know? Uh, hmm, where do you start? Like all this over-cleanliness, you know, all the problems that it leads to. But in a time where 
all you have is internet and television to instruct you. Hmm. I think the people that are relying on television, there's a lot more of them. And a lot fewer people are, are have the luxury, I would say, in this time of life, to uh, know, for one thing, that the MSM is full of shit, and then two, have the ability to use the internet for something besides gaming. Because I did that for uh, quite a bit before I realized, hey, this internet thing's got answers to questions, too. So as I started, then the computer people started to figure out how to tailor make the answers to fit the questioner so that you're likely to find things that you like. Stop looking. And some of us aren't so easily uh, bullshitted, you know. Just because you tell me one thing doesn't mean that's the only thing it could be. What else is there? <laughs> well, so right now we're at, we're in the what I call nobody else agrees with me. This is the drill part of this corona crap, and I don't think they've unleashed anything on us that wasn't already there. Already, they're just relying on the media to feed back the numbers and dictate the way people die to the person reading or listening so that they'll believe certain ideas that, well, if you pursue them in any rational way, you find out that they're exaggerated, we're being misled, like usual. I mean, there's really nothing new to all this anyway, but I guess uh, I'm going to call today's show My Fear of Compliance. And I'm glad Mary's not on the show because if she was with me right now, she'd be laughing because she was with me when I was told that my problem with the Internet is that I have a fear of compliance by another member of the group. There was obviously something wrong with me because I won't comply to the society and what it tells me to believe. So, as a... a she was trying to guess at the time, trying to insult me. <laughs> but, wow, I just made a bigger joke out of it than it already was. A fear of compliance. When you think about that for just a moment, I don't know what kind of horrible ideas it would give you, but complying doesn't seem to work out too well for most people. You know, um, <laughs> he's a little bullshit. <laughs> hey, Betty. <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Hey, wife, can I have some Java Java? Oh, I'm begging the wife for a cup of coffee live on the radio. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, me and Mary and Cirque and a few others go back to the uh, World Truth site. And when we were on that World Truth site, there was some characters. We had some fun and posted this, posted that, and learned a lot of shit. But uh, eventually, there was just in, in-house problems that, that came with the site. They caused some uh, problems that couldn't be rectified. So everybody parted ways. And we ended up over here hanging out with Grimner at RLM, reallibertymedia.com. And uh, it's a small chat room, and there's some characters on here that have every opinion that there is to have. Somebody has it. So... You know, you're all welcome to come into the chat room and disagree with the next guy about shit you can't prove all you like. And I've been on the radio for a long time talking about the way I look at this stuff. Most of it, you either you believe something, you can't prove it because you don't have the equipment to prove it. So you take it for, you know, they said so. Okay. Well, how far are you willing to go with all that? You know, to the point of... Uh, Total fucking shutdown in your society and food supplies cut off. And you name it, and they're they're pulling it on somebody somewhere right now. But they're claiming to do it on a global scale. Now, when I go out into the city I live in, I don't see but maybe a tenth of the drama. You know, the uh, separating everybody. And there's a lot of people that are just, they're still talking to each other. and They're standing real close. And, They've known each other their whole fucking life, so. Some of this is real, and some of it isn't. And I call this a hoax because I think 
that the people that are going to get ill and die, well, they were already going to do that any damn way. And through the years, they've inoculated people with uh, flu shots and this shots and sprayed stuff in the air. We don't know what's going on. We only know what we're told by the people that are doing it. And if this is the end result okay, of global lockdowns and financial collapse and ruin and hordes of people can't get this and can't get that, well, that doesn't seem to be what the original plan was indicating to me. You know, I, so I, and then I go into town and I see the plentifulness and the abundance in this little, you know, one horse town and wonder, wow, this, this virus is really working in my favor, you know, for the most part, because I'm not a huggy, lovey, talkative, out of the public kind of guy. I like to do my trade and get the fuck out, smile a little bit, say thank you. I don't want to talk about my children and shit like that. I'll tie up lines. I like to do it quickly, get out there, get home. So in the end, I, I come out the winter. And with all this lockdown and everybody's afraid that our plane won, it's still volunteer year except for, uh, I guess, a few stores. Or the stores decided to abandon because they couldn't afford to operate if they're not going to have any clients. So it's a catch-22. You know, it's all a matter of uh, what your culture is willing to suffer through, I suppose, depending on your version of suffer. uh, My internal fear of compliance tells me that if 90% of the population or better want to do something, I don't want to do it. (sighs) So here we are. And I've seen all the threats, and I've I've heard it all. Yeah, I'm going to get sick and die and all that or shit. Well, maybe I will. But I'm not in that situation. So to put all my attention on gloom and doom and worry and, oh, I'm going to get sick, then if I do that, then I will. Because it's like a you're bringing this shit on yourself, in my opinion. So I would believe that. If I started whining to everybody how bad I feel when I didn't, after a couple of days of that, you will. I would. I would succumb to my own mental illness and become sick. So I stay cocky and smug, and it seems to work. Plus, I take a few uh, remedies that have been offered over the years, like uh, the rose hip for the arthritis. That worked out really good. Baking soda for the cancer. I don't. I don't know if I've got a cancerous tumor. My wife would have probably felt it somewhere by now, right, honey? Uh, so I, I'm obviously I'm cancer tumorous free. So what's left? You know, this horrible coronavirus. <laughs> and there's so much to read out there. I read a story the other day that said, uh, I guess I should open it. The three things that the coronavirus victims have in common. I think it was on YouTube. Let me take a moment here. I'll stick around for me while I dig around through YouTube looking for a a link to prove that I'm not just making this shit up as I talk. (laughs) I stole it from somebody else. So we go three things. Corona victims have in common and see what old you fool brings up because that's where I think I saw it anyway and nah, the link I'm thinking of I don't know to be specific I'd have to spend some quality time searching my archives to prove my point but the things that they were claiming in this article were basically that the people that are fatally dropping from this virus. Well, they got pre-existing, uh, pre-existing illness, for one. And uh, part of that is the shit that we eat. You know, there's a certain amount of crap that we eat that me and my wife, we call it crap. <laughs> when I go to the store, I know the difference between the good food and the crap food. And we have a little bit of larceny, in, so we indulge a little bit of crap food. And I I think that the balance of knowing what you're doing helps you tremendously. 
if I started to feel ill, the first thing I would do would be give up the crap food that I think would be making me sick. Because uh, for me, that's how it works. Uh, hmm. I guess I've hit those twilight years. And now I think I know shit because I managed to live this long. <laughs> so explaining to other people, how did you do it? Hmm. I have no fucking idea. I just wake up in the morning and people tell me, hey, drink this, try that. And I do. And in, in, if in a certain amount of time I start feeling physically better as a result of taking a suggestion, well, I tell other people, hey, I tried this, man. You know what? I'm 60 years old and going to the grocery and uh, carrying back a bag full of food, it's not the it's not the trip and the carrying that's the drag. It's the dealing with these poor people that are so convinced they're going to die if they get sneezed on. It's pitiful. But we, I guess in the world we're, we're living in, we've got the Internet and the illusion of being able to be free thinkers and think whatever we like and all this horse shit. And I'm not so cons- uh, uh, convinced, say, that joining a group is always the answer. <laughs> so I've decided to stick with my guns and just deny this whole fucking thing is real to me. Ah, to you, it might be real. That's not my problem. My problem is that I go out in the world and don't act a fool and be violent to other people. So I can still manage that. I don't need to get pissed off and upset and carry this anger about this fucking lockdown crap. And I've got to carry it around unless I want to. So I kind of pushed it, you know. I went out there angry to just get it out of my system, and it worked. And today I was out there, and I felt normal again, whatever normal is to me, comfortable. Um, and the stores are moving so fast. Man, stores, I used to have to go and wait in line for 10 to 15 minutes, you know, to get served. And here, 10 or 15 minutes in a store is like a long time. Well, now it is. Now, boom, I walk in and there's nobody there. Boom, get my shit and leave. So, on that, I thank you, coronavirus. But on the other side of it, it doesn't take much to scare a bunch of people without any physical proof that what you're talking about is possible. <laughs> Just tell them scientists said so. They go, oh, help me. <laughs> Get my prayer mat out. The scientists are talking. Bill Gates has got to make some more money. Because <laughs> uh, anything that people have a vested interest in when there's a cure are the very fucking people that created the problem that they're curing. And if you haven't learned that through your history by now, then you probably don't. You, you won't. You'll never see that side of it. I think that uh, it's a choice we make. You, know, you can look at life however you like. That's the beauty of being alive. You can join groups. You can join religions. You can go to school. and You know, you could be a fucking groupie for a rock band. Whatever the fuck you want to do in life is out there for you to do. Until now. So first, they chipped away at our spe- you know, freedom of speech. Oh, it took them years to do this. Years and years. You know, now we've got uh, nothing. Now you don't even have the freedom of touch. If you go out to public and you're too close to somebody else, in some places I've read that uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> punishable and enforced by the la la. <laughs> Popo's got your back. <laughs> anyway, me, I don't know. I haven't seen, I saw the cops once when I was out in the very beginning of this drama and like I was complaining about when I said it they they paid no attention to me I'm not a bad guy in the eyes of the damn law I'm so depressed <laughs> they used to always go hey who are you and about 20 years ago it stopped it just ended and I have yet to be jacked up by the police ever since and I don't really get why I think I know why but that's just to, you know, to humor myself as some kind of reason, but haven't been jacked by the police since, I don't know if it's 1988 or 99. 
But it was right in that era, that period of time that I'm referring back to. And and now there's nobody left to even enforce shit. <laughs> uh, I get, well, there's police that, you know, uh, they're in the next town. There's a bigger city closer, to, about 20, what is it, 20 kilometers from here. And they have a police, but when they call the police here and it's not anything important, they kind of blow it off. So I don't know. And I don't, I don't see any outside changes except for the stores being closed and a, and a few people wearing a mask. I've seen like three in my excursions to town. You know, stepping over all the dead bodies in the street, and, uh, wading through the, the chaos and the trouble. And through, no, I'm fucking around. There isn't any. This is just, uh, it's still got that little bit of busy, though. I mean, except the weekends here, people are, they're not as social here. They don't, they don't look at shopping as a vocation. If you're not done with your shopping on Saturday by 2 o'clock, we open back up on Monday. <laughs> and unless it's a, uh, grocery store pretty much that's the normal so this lockdown thing really really wasn't much of a uh, a repression tool here as it would have been if it was a big city you know because um, I guess most folks can go without a haircut for about a month or so before they start getting that uh, I gotta get my haircut shit bold nonsense going I don't know where that comes from either, because I think cutting your hair is the most unnatural fucking act you can physically do. Don't do it. You're being tricked. It's a comic plot to make you wireless, controllable. Hmm. They say that uh, long hair is like an antennae, because you know they poison our third eye, so we've got this ability to grow hair. Why? Why do you grow hair? Hmm. Anyway, I got a link or two I got open for reading perusal tonight. Let me see what I found. And I will copy and post it into the reallibertymedia.com chat so that you guys can enjoy it right along with me. <laughs> hey, mental. <laughs> uh, this one you might enjoy. Okay. And it's called... What is it called? Um... I don't know, something. But it says, to Swedes, it's the rest of the world engaging in a reckless experiment. And Sweden has its own experts, it trusts. No imperial college sensationalism welcome here. Now and again, my wife asks if it's worth getting Swedish passports for our children. She has never got around to seeking British citizenship. And I try to tell her that she'd be better she'd better get her skates on before home secure secretary Pretty Patel comes around asking for her papers. But the kids, how would a Swedish passport possibly benefit them? We run through the we run through what might go wrong for a country, and in every eventuality Britain always seems the better bet. But now Swedes have a fresh argument that their country might be the only one in Europe to come out of the coronavirus crisis with the economy semi-intact. Hmm. Let us ponder, children. Oh. <laughs> there is still no lockdown there. Shopping centers remain open as are most schools and firms. Many work from home, many don't. All they're at liberty to choose. All are at liberty to choose. Remember Liberty Grimner, that concept you've been trying to bring to the front of people's minds since you started this radio stuff. and uh, Not the radio only, but you know, the site. Yeah, well... I understand the principles of it, but uh, whenever you deal with government, there's going to be some kind of government is going to try to restrict your liberty, period. That's just the way it works. 
And the more money that you have in life, the more restriction there is on you as an individual, period. Debt is slavery. And the more debt you got, the better it is to uh, be in debt. You know, Not the less. The less debt you got, you suffer. But, man, if you're huge in debt for millions, they'll never get it. So they just play the game with you. <laughs> it's beautiful. Anyway, back to my epic talk story uh, topic. Hmm. Where did I leave off? Oh, well, let's see. When I called a friend in Stockholm to ask about the Swedish experiment, he was on his way to a book launch. He's still talking his sons to, taking his sons to football matches and is proud that Sweden is keeping calm and carrying on. To him, there is no Swedish experiment. It's the rest of Europe that is experimenting by locking down econ economies in response to a virus which may prove to be no more deadly than flu. It's not that Sweden is in denial. It has had 5,466 confirmed cases, 282 deaths. Coronavirus has been found in a third of Stockholm's many elderly care homes. But the debate there is still where the British debate was three weeks ago when the Prime Minister was resisting lockdown. This changed for Britain when Imperial College London published its study suggesting that avoiding lockdown could mean 250,000 deaths. This, lo uh, this logic applies to Sweden, but the country of the Nobel Prize and the Karolinska Institute believes its own experts. They disagree with Imperial. They still see COVID-19 as a manageable risk. The face of Sweden's response has been Anders Tegnell, the state epidemiologist, <laughs> who has held daily press conferences. Politicians have taken a back seat. His team have published their own assessment of the virus and its likely trajectory, showing it peaking with about 250 needing intensive care in Stockholm. The nation's hospitals, he says, can cope. A 600-bed temporary ward is opening tomorrow, south of the city, and when it does, a quarter of all intensive care beds will be used. So for now, no reason to impose any more restrictions. He urges caution, and Swedes are responding. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Greta's probably just livid. Well, you were supposed to all die of the climate. What's going on here? Six formers and university students are learning from home. Sports fixtures continue, but with spectators more spaced out. Online meetups are replacing real ones. Uh, elbow bumping, remember that? Replaced handshakes long ago. A naturally cautious country is taking Tegnell's advice. Ah, it's a long wordy fucking link in it. <clears throat> but, see, I'm not the only one. This, this may not agree with me that this is 90%, 95% bullshit, and 5% true. I just don't know what 5% true is. But whatever it is, I don't have it. So, hmm. I think, to be honest, you know, to I'd really have to know somebody personally. That is, this has been, how long, a month now? We've been playing this fucking game, and I still don't know anybody that's, in the hospital or dying from this shit. My neighbor's got damn cancer. And I seen him today. I passed him in the street. No mask. So, um, and he's a big man, too. He's like six foot five. He's a huge guy. So he's not a weak little fucker like me. He's a big, strong guy. But out of the two of us, he's one that's ill. And uh, I try to give him, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt and not try to invoke any bad juju on him, whatever he may think. But he passed me by and we said hello to each other and then his wife. And everything's just like it's always been. And uh, today I didn't, 
I don't know. I didn't see any, uh, no fear. He didn't look the other way and pretend I wasn't there or anything. It was, hello. So, hmm. I wonder, you know, if, if a guy in that physical condition and, and with all the same information we have, because everybody knows, you can't not know this crap. Uh, so, if he felt threatened, he's not the type to go out in public and, and risk his health. He's already ill. So, I'm taking what I saw as a step forward. And if he's losing his, you know, uh, compliance, to comply with whatever... I don't think there's even a compliance here about this mask thing. I've seen him... And I think three people in, in store over the, whatever it's been, a couple of weeks now. I can't keep track. All these days look alike. Oh, I'm going insane. Help, help. <laughs> Dork table. Now, I put that link up. There's plenty of stuff that's just going to either make you pissed off at Sweden for not complying to the, you know, the global dominance bullshit and doing what you're fucking told. And destroy everybody instead of just... You know, hey, take your chances. You might get a cold and die. We already knew that going in, but all this extra hoopla about coronavirus. It, oh, man. It doesn't get any better. I, I'm just pissed off that it wasn't me that was financially uh, raking in the dough over all this stupidity. Because you know one thing. Where there's people that lose money, well, there's people that find the money those idiots lost. <laughs> and it's all an illusion anyway. It's like I call it creative accounting. So if you're deeply rooted in all that shit, there's ways to survive. And if you're not deeply rooted in all that shit, you're living in the physical world right now, chances are the future is not looking too promising. I would venture to guess there's a lot of pissed off people in the world right now. You know, just uh, angry about what they're reading about other places that they're not even at, let alone where they are. So, if it was uh, hopeless looking for me here where I am right now, I think I'd have a different story to tell. I'd be like, oh, grab your guns and go out and shoot people and protect yourself and all that horse shit. But I, I don't. I think it's just a, another day in life. Nothing changed. Uh, the things that changed were financial changes, disguised as an epidemic so that we wouldn't panic about the wrong thing and you know, make it worse. <laughs> They're even controlling what you know and how you know it. And I've seen other people's input about how you catch a virus and they get bashed really bad because, well, hmm, let's just disqualify common sense and reason and go with stories that we hear on the Internet and read you know, the news, and whatever's popular, because, uh, you know, that's what caused all this trash in the first place. So I think, hmm, my fear of compliance kicks right into gear. So I listen to the oddball that's got a different story. <laughs> I usually agree with it. Because the story that I'm hearing makes no sense. And I don't see any victims. I'm just seeing a lot of people act ignorantly over a threat. And I'm a victim of the same threat, yet I don't give a fuck. I'm washing my fucking hands excessively. I'm not wearing a fucking mask. I'm not going to change anything. And until there's guns in my face forcing me to comply to something, my life hasn't changed really at all. <laughs> I was just taking a personal slap somehow for the collective uh, lockdown. The, just that feeling of reading this horrible shit on the internet about my home countries being treated like a bunch of monkeys. They're, you know, they're this and they're that. And, uh, you see the same politicians saying the same old bullshit stories on the same old internet site year in, year out. They just change a word here and there. You know, this time it's corona or a respirator or something, you know, some catchphrase, some word that's really beyond your scope. But you saw a link, so now you're an expert in coronavirus, as I am. 
So I took the easy way out and decided to go with this is a fucking hoax. And if I'm wrong, oh well, no skin off your back, huh? That's the way I look at it. And I'm still here, and it's been a month or so. Well, how many months has it been since? I guess they kicked this off over in, I don't know where. <laughs> I've got no idea. But uh, hmm. Sweden didn't buy it. They're doing all right. Let's see. What else have I got? And for your other uh, link approval here tonight. Wait a minute. Ah, I opened up a random link off of, uh, what is it? I, not Google, but Firefox. You know, because we're all having, uh, what is it? We're having uh, search engine wars. Whose search engine is better than whose? And which one works better? I don't know. I, I just... Um, rely on on people I trust, like Grim or Circle, that you know, if I ask them a question, they'll tell me what they think. And my wife told me what she thought, so I asked Grim. <laughs> Grim told me what he thought, so I, oh, I'll try that. And I, I don't really know what to shop for in a in a browser in the first place. I'm not that fussy. I just want the truth, whatever the truth may be. And I think that. Uh, it's an individual thing. You read it, and you believe what you want to, and what you don't want to, you get rid of it, just like everybody else. But the catchphrases and the slogans are just, they're so boring, and uh, it's just a rerun of a rerun of a rerun. And history being told 100 years later, I wasn't around in 1913. I don't give a flying fuck what anybody today has to say about 1913. I wasn't here. I didn't come till 59. So I live my life according not to what I read in books about 100 years ago, but what I see in my life. You know? Where have I seen this before? Ah, this is so familiar. <laughs> I read 1984. Wow. I saw the movie 1984. Wow. See? So certain... Certain things in society haven't been embedded into my mind in a certain light that other people don't see. That's just the way it is. And then I don't know what happened. See, Kate, I don't know what happened instantly around Christmas 1913. Nor do I trust the sources of information that are available to tell me what happened in 1913. But uh, there you go. You know, it... It's all relative to your reality. If you want to live under the dictatorial fucking state that wants to rule you like a, like a fucking pawn on a chessboard, move you around and tell you what to do and who to associate with, what time of day you can do this, what time of day you can do that, that's what you got a home for so you can have the freedom of mo you know, choice to do certain ideas. And then you got society. And society is a failed fucking mess. If you can look at society right now and call that success, well, hmm, I don't. I think it's failed. And uh, participating in it, hmm, nah, I don't want to do that. And if I do it, I want it to be like it is now compared to how it, it was where I came from. Crowded. And everybody in a hurry. Me first and then you. And now it's Five cars are a traffic jam, and there might be three or four people in the store getting something. Wow, what a problem to have. And all this, because the population is so gullible that they're going to believe what the, you know, what the press tells them to believe without taking a look around them and seeing, no, that's not possible. It's a story. I don't know if they can do the math of, Let's see, 2% of the population is expected to get the flu and die as a result of that flu. 1% is expected to get this virus and die as a result of this virus. The books are being cooked by the people in charge of re reporting to us what people die from. We all know that. They're exaggerating. They're mislabeling. They're calling things what they're not. But, you know, history shows, history shows us that we've been fucked ever since we were old enough to understand 
what the words being fuck meant. Well, whether you want to admit it or not, that's another story. Some people think they can beat this game. No, this game is designed to beat us collectively. And it's doing a kick-ass job right now. So what I'm trying to do is make the best of a shitty situation that really doesn't exist. It exists in people's minds because somebody could die. Whoa, big deal. I think Mary showed us Sunday that anybody can be a victim of some tragedy at any given fucking time. Just when it happens, it happens. Deal with reality. And here we are all are worried about the tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to get sick and die. Oh, help, help, help. And I, uh, not me. Not going to worry about it. And as uh, far as the, the, the bad habits, the smoking, the drinking, I ain't going to give any of that up. For what? So I could live an extra month or some bullshit like that. Cirque's got years planned, so... And I figure it like this. She must be onto something because the longer I've <clears throat> been in this marriage, the physically healthier I get. <laughs> Instead of as I've gotten older, I wasn't taking as good a care of myself when I was a bachelor than I am now that I'm a married guy. And I got somebody to, you know, be responsible to that cares about what happens. So, hmm. You know, it's the same thing as uh, Grimm's being, uh, you know, a recluse, so keeps himself, doesn't care for people too much. Well, I don't, I don't think that me and Cirque are that much different. It's just for some reason we get along good enough to not kill each other and, and live in this fucked up world that we live in, and uh, never get into personal disagreement about how we see this fucking mess that we're living in. We, we never argue about any of that crap. It doesn't, it doesn't hold a value. Uh, so we keep our arguing to stupid shit that won't be remembered maybe once a year, once every six months, year, something like that. And we have a little argument so that we know we're alive and then it's over. But uh, all this drama and hoopla with this virus, we got relatives that come over from the city in Copenhagen. Her mother, oh, her mother and her sister, her brother-in-law, nephew, his girlfriend, and nobody has come down sick, bedridden, and, and we've been doing this for, what, three weeks, a month, something like that, since whatever this thing started. So, you know, even Hannah's out there barking at the virus out in the yard, but, uh, hmm. I don't know, Woody's whining about his sweaty ball sack, huh? RLM chat for your reading approval. Approval. I fucked that one up. Anyway, so I got a link for you called uh, What is the Flu? And I just pulled it up random. I have no idea what it says. We're going to find out together. And I did I post it? I don't know if I posted it or not. I'm going to repost it just in case I, I'm a little bit stoned tonight on the solo broadcast. Uh, I miss Mary. <laughs> but that's okay. So, for your reading enjoyment, we have a thing called, What is the Flu? Because, you know, I'm an expert on the flu now because we have coronavirus. So, I just want to keep you updated on how fucking smart I am so that you don't laugh at me because I call this thing a hoax. Now, where was I? The flu is a rep respiratory illness caused by the influenza virus. The flu is not the same as a cold although they share many of the same symptoms. The cold is caused by a different virus, and it tends to have milder symptoms than the flu. Colds are also less likely to cause serious complications. I guess they're intimating that you're more than likely, if you get worse, you got the flu, and if you heal quickly, you've got a cold. Okay, That's how I interpret this. I, I might... I don't, I'm not as smart as you other people. I'm more like Fredo. Okay. When the influenza virus gets into the body, it moves into the respiratory tract. Once there, it binds to the surface of cells. The virus then opens and releases its genetic information, RNA, into the cell's nucleus. The nucleus 
is where the cell's genetic information, DNA and RNA, is stored. The virus replicates or copies itself and takes over the functions of the cell. The copies of the virus move to the cell membrane until the cell finally dies and releases them out into the body, where they go on to infect other cells. Booga, booga, booga. The respiratory tissues swell up and become inflamed. The inflammation usually heals within a few weeks as the virus moves through the respiratory tract and into the bloodstream. The first symptoms begin to emerge. The replication process continues for up to several days until the body's immune system begins to fight the virus off. So, and that's where uh, everybody's got their own version of how to do this and how to do that. You know, we've been freedom of choice into following bad ideas and not pursuing a, a correct way to repair a damage. <laughs> I didn't say cure. <laughs> there you go. Now, to continue. Flu symptoms can include any or all of the following. Coughing, sneezing, fever, body aches, runny nose, and or congestion, tiredness. These symptoms, although uncomfortable, are generally not dangerous. But the flu also weakens the immune system, leaving it vulnerable to more serious infections. High-risk individuals in particular are susceptible to serious complications such as bacterial pneumonia, <laughs> dehydration, sinus problems and ear infections, primarily in children, worsening of pre-existing conditions such as asthma or diabetes. For more information about the flu, check out how the flu works. Here are some interesting links for your reading perusal. Now, I don't know if that really told you anything you didn't know before, which is kind of my point, is the press and the state is making this big damn thing out of something so uh, weak. Flu. And I know, yeah, people die from the flu, but it will it will tell you, if you do a little research, that if it gets to that degree, you're likely already ill of something else, far worse than the flu. The flu is the last nail in the box. You let it go that far. And we're not taught that. Oh, there's maintenance regimens. And you can do this to sort of protect that, in a sense. And that's what I've learned to do. And I think, well... Between that and Cirque, it's keeping me going. Um, I'm not worried about the longevity thing myself. Uh, you know, like, I don't know. I wake up in the morning and just am so fucking amazed that it's another day. I'm still here. Go figure. But uh, hmm. my exceptionalism side tells me I deserve it. You know, I'm an American, by God. Americans don't die in Denmark, for fuck's sake. They, uh, what do they do? <laughs> See, the whole thing is, just, wow, it's all a matter of interpretation. But, uh, oh, I wanted to take a minute to uh, mention Woody's got uh, video links on Minds.com. I'm going to post his, uh, his name that he uses over there. And if you like videos, he does some really nice outdoor stuff. And, uh. I just wanted to get a little attention to his thing. So I'm putting up his... He's got this really hard name to explain. So I'm just going to write it. I hope I wrote it right. Yeah. Con. At Minds. Yeah, he's at Minds.com. So this is the way it would read, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm talking to myself out loud like some kind of crazy guy on the radio. Uh so, this, I'm just mentioning it because Woody's one of the uh, RLM regulars. He's been around a while. And he does 
do things. He goes outside into the desert and rides a bike through all that cactus. <laughs> Crazy things that uh, I wouldn't try at this age. I think I've far well grown out of the daredevil days. They're finished. Uh, maybe not to the point of cowardice, but just, you know, concerned to not break a knee or a leg or something at this point. So why do something crazy to bring it on? But I'm glad there's people like Woody that'll go out into the physical world, you know, the desert out there and show us what snakes look like and shit that I'll never see. I'll never see another Arizona snake, not in Denmark. Unless I go take a look at Woody's um, site over at Minds.com. <laughs> so, you know, I thought I'd let you guys know that he's doing that because he doesn't promote his own stuff. So I thought I'd take a minute to uh, point you in that direction to look at what he's been doing, what he's up to out there in the uh, no man's land where he lives. And, you know, like Grim, some people isolate better than others, I suppose. Rob works. He's got a partner. But still, I have a partner, and we're in you know this supposed isolation crap with the state nonsense. But you know, they're already starting to relax and realize that the state needs some income from its slaves to operate. So they're compromising, and she's going to go into the city to work two days a week. <laughs> so in the long run. She's still doing, uh, you know, what the state wants, but she lives, in, you know, she's lived in Copenhagen most of her life. So her family all lives there. So now she goes and has two days a week where she can go mingle with her family like she's usually you know, used to doing. So it turns out that the, uh, the coronavirus hiccup here in Denmark for the moment has been just an inconvenience. And, uh, a public thing, you know, where you watch other people, I don't know, I guess to me it's just act childish over a threat. This could happen, that could happen, blah, 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 blah. Let's all, you know, dig a big hole and hide in it because something bad could happen. And I just still think, man, what did your balls drop off? What the fuck's going on here? I, I thought everybody was tough and strong. It turns out, no... If you're told not to be tough and strong by the mother state, well, then you're going to back down and do what you're told, I suppose. I don't know. But then again, uh, you're going to read things about this country that may or may not be true, depending on the city that you live in. And uh, where it's small population, it's usually a way lot lax uh, atmosphere in the first place. People aren't so stressed and agitated, but they come up with this here coronavirus to agitate and stress everybody equally. So if you choose to be stressed, this is my end, end of the show theme, uh, then go with it. You know, maybe that's what you need. You need to be afraid and cowardly and oh, oh, what's going to happen? And the rest of us are just going to wake up in the morning and face the day like we always have. Virus or no virus, State or no state, threat or no threat. So, you know, at the risk of being hung on a fucking uh, post and strangled to death, I'm going to call this fucking thing a hoax. And there you go. If you don't think so, then to you it's not. And it's real. And if it's real, good luck. Hmm. I don't have that luxury to... Uh, defy my own personal belief in reality. My mind tells me that's a brick wall in front of me. Do not run into it. So, I follow my instinct and go, I'm not going to run headfirst into that brick wall. I'm a smart guy. But, then again, I interpret information from government as, why don't you just close your eyes and run fucking head straight into that wall? And that's what the government wants me to do. And, uh, no, I've got a total fear of compliance. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. Um, <clears throat> and yet, to this moment, I've heard all the threats, and, yeah, they're making laws, and all this crap is coming, and, well, that's all swell and good, but it ain't happened yet. 
So in my reality, I'm going to deal with my day the way my day is going and uh, try to take the uh, things I read on the Internet as, well, that's happening way over there. And on a real serious level, that doesn't affect me unless I want it to. I have to uh, be concerned with it somehow. And I don't think I am. I'm not capable of all that empathy. Fuck, I got my own life to live. So, you know, if things are bad, do something to improve them. And if they're already good, I don't know, give somebody that's having a hard time a hand with it. Fuck, I don't know what to tell people. Except that I think they're being screwed and they don't want to hear that. So, outside of the radio, I'm pretty much locked down in my, my own personal opinion. And, uh, Thanks a lot, Grim, for letting me do this dork table thing and have some fun with the radio and read a few things and voice a few opinions, you know, because uh, in the end, the only one that matters, you know, about who, what my opinion is, the only one that truly fucking affects is circle. You know, it it's the freedom of being able to voice it is a gift from Grimner, you know, he does all the technical shit to keep the radio and the chat room going. And the rest of us people, just we throw our input in through either contribution or time spent interacting. Everybody does their part. You know? And if you don't like it, you don't like it. Whoop, whoop. I don't like it. So what? And I think that's the the next rung of the ladder I got to climb is the... Uh, Oh, that makes me angry. Oh, that's insulting. Uh, It's like, wow. I've been doing this for 60 fucking years. I should have learned something. So, hmm, what is the lesson I have to learn? (laughs) And And the beauty of this thing for me is it's whatever I want it to be. Whatever has my attention deserves my attention. So, thanks for uh, hanging out with me. A special hey to Mental Pancakes. Comes in on Saturday. You know, to visit me on the RLM. Appreciate that. And uh, we got Grimner. Beautiful job on keeping me alive on the radio, apparently. And uh, we got all the chatters. Everybody that spends their time pointing out what they think is the truth or what they believe. And, you know, I think we're, we're getting too serious and not having enough fun. So I'm going to just uh, try to pay more attention to that instead of uh, riding the negative, insane ro- roller coaster thing. It's getting boring, I think. So, hmm. but I have a sarcastic fucking tone, so I'm kind of confused about how I'm going to approach this. But I think a change is coming. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. And for those of you interested in the other people that do radio on the reallibertymedia.com, like Grimnir, like Moose Girl, like Hal Anthony, like Vinny. Well, Vinny did, but he's got a lot of stuff still on it. Uh, there's a schedule on the main page of the reallibertymedia.com. And Grim made this page easy enough for me to navigate it without asking any questions. <laughs> So, if you're uh, if you're not really good with a computer, but you're curious about the site, that's what you do. RealLibertyMedia.com and hit enter. <laughs> so, uh, thanks everybody. Over and.